Before we get into the Bears news of the day, we got our ongoing May subscriber battle. I got to be honest, we're kicking the Cowboys reports ass, but we can't let the pedal off the metal. Let's beat them to a thousand new subs this month. If you want free and daily Chicago Bears content, hit that subscribe button. It's 100% free. Do not miss out on a single episode. All right, my name is Harrison Graham. The Bears have signed six players following rookie minicamp. Uh, two veterans and four rookies, so we will get into all of those players here. Let's get the guy we already talked about out of the way. This was on yesterday's video. This one had leaked out that Tommy Sweeney, the veteran tight end, uh, would be signing with Chicago after a successful rookie or uh, rookie minicamp tryout. He's not a rookie. Um, discussed this on yesterday's show, so if you want kind of a little deeper discussion into him and some Bears rookie minicamp winners and losers, go check that out. But a uh, little more on the player here. Um, 6'5", 250. He's played in 24 games, former seventh-round pick, so he's got a little experience here. One touchdown under his belt, decent blocker, and we've talked about it a lot. The Bears have kind of an opening here, I would say, at that number three tight end position. I mean, you've got Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, Steven Carlson, Tommy Sweeney, Brendan Bates, who is a rookie UDFA who they signed before rookie minicamp. So you got kind of Three guys vying for that number three role. I still think bringing in a more accomplished vet like a Mercedes Lewis would make a lot of sense. Uh, but um, let's say it is these three players. It is definitely up for grabs. You don't have a clear-cut answer there uh, for that number three tight end role. So uh, an opportunity for Sweeney to get back into the NFL. He had a medical scare last year. Uh, it cost him to skip the season. Back healthy and appears to be ready to go. Another veteran, and probably the name you guys will recognize the most on this list, that is Freddie Swain, the wide receiver out of Florida. Uh, spent a couple of years with Seattle where he had his most success. I would say he's definitely the most NFL accomplished player here. Obviously, the next four guys haven't played in the NFL yet, but um, he's the most accomplished, probably the most well-known uh, as well. Uh, Decent career numbers for a guy who's having to try out at rookie minicamp as a veteran, right? Six touchdowns, four of those in one year, I believe, in either 21 or 22 with Seattle, uh, over 500 yards. So, I mean, this is a guy who's played a little bit, some kick return experience as well. And we've talked about it a lot. I mean, after your top three guys, your core three, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, it's not like you've got clear-cut defined roles and answers. I mean, I, I'd be shocked if Tyler Scott wasn't on the 53, but even if he is, he's still probably got one or two spots. Is Valus Jones a lock uh, due to his kick return ability? I wouldn't say a lock. Is Dante Pettis a lock? Is Colin Johnson? I think those guys are all going to have to work for it, and I would put uh, Freddie Swain into that category. Uh, we'll see how it all plays out, but um, successful tryout for him, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Take a guess, will Freddie Swain make the Bears 53-man roster? Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Certainly an uphill battle still, but uh, he at least has a shot. I give him a 20% chance. I wouldn't completely uh, rule it out. Obviously going to have to have a great training camp, but now he's got his foot in the door and he's got an opportunity. John Jackson the third. we threw up a YouTube short earlier today. Uh, good friends with Caleb Williams. Uh, the, these two guys get along really well. Some of them even use the term best friend of Caleb Williams. Uh, you know, I, that seems strong. But um, played at USC together uh, in 2022. Jackson transferred in Nevada this past year after being a backup at USC and put together almost a 300-yard season, so it was a little more productive uh, at Nevada. Um, so you got kind of a personal relationship there with the Bears' new quarterback. And kind of a fun, interesting fact, his dad played five games with the Bears in 1996 as a receiver as well. So uh, he's got the bloodline, got the uh, the franchise connection there. I, I think for him it would be the ultimate long shot uh, to make the roster. Hey, maybe he's a guy you keep on the practice squad, see if he can develop. He's 6'1", 215. He's got the relationship with your new franchise quarterback. Uh, I don't think there's really that much harm there uh, if he takes up one spot on your 90 in the offseason and then maybe is on your practice squad. Before we get to the next three players the Bears have signed, got to tell you about our sponsor. That is Prize Picks. Create yourself an account today by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Why the slash CLNS? Because code CLNS will get you a first-time deposit match up to $100. The way Prize Picks works is very simple. You pick two to six players on any given entry, and uh, you take more or less on their projected stats. you got NBA playoffs going, NHL playoffs. 
Major League Baseball, UFC, WNBA uh, tipping off tomorrow night. Lots to get into. NBA playoff action tonight as the Mavs and Thunder uh, tip off game four. Going to go less on Luka, points, rebounds, and assists. He's been pretty banged up in the postseason, but is uh, one of his partners in crime. P.J. Washington's been hot, 27 or more of the last two games. We're going to take more than 15 points and then less on Shea Gilgis-Alexander, rebounds and assists there. Uh, get going, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get that deposit match right now. Take advantage, make some money. It's fun. The stakes have never been higher, and uh, let's have a ball together. Okay, keep it rolling here. Next up is Leon Jones, the cornerback out of Arkansas State. A little bit of buzz of him heading into this camp and clearly performed well enough to make the 90-man roster. Uh, in three years at Arkansas State, uh, 20 pass breakups, so he's got some ball skills, has an, had an interception there as well. I think probably what the Bears like here is he's got pretty good length. 6'1", just under 200 pounds is the Arkansas State product. Now, obviously, the quarterback room is crowded for Chicago. You know, he's going to have to beat out a guy like a Jalen Jones or a Josh Blackwell probably uh, to have a chance to make this football team. You look at his RAS, his relative athletic score, okay, right, 6'6", 7". You know, uh, the measurables there at the combine were just under six foot, so certainly listed higher um, – in college than his RAS there. Uh, the 40 is a bit of a concern. Long speed, not great at 4.59. But he's got some explosiveness. A broad jump of over 11 feet, so that's pretty impressive. His 10-yard split is good. So we'll see. We'll see if he can hold up, but uh, he uh, uh, ends up signing a deal here. Deshaun Mallory, the defensive tackle, defensive lineman, uh, signing a deal as well. What I like about him, four-year Power 5 player, three at Michigan State, last year at Arizona State. Um, you look at his career numbers, 91 tackles, four and a half sacks, 15 TFLs, five breakups, get some hands on some footballs. A uh, bit of a tweener. Uh, he's 6'1", 275. This kind of reminds me of DeAnthony Jones last year from Houston. He was kind of a tweener as well. He wasn't athletic enough to be a really good edge. He was kind of too small to be a defensive tackle, so we'll see if Mallory can find his way. But um, I think there are some overlaps uh, there when you compare him to Jones from last year. So we'll see if he has a shot of cracking this roster, but uh, uh, he at least uh, did enough to uh, make the 90, man. All right, alert. Uh, we normally are live today, so if you're wondering why uh, we're not, uh, mixing things up, uh, we're going live tomorrow at 4 o'clock Central. It's just easier with some of our scheduling uh, things with the NBA here at Chat Sports. Uh, but we'll be live tomorrow uh, at 4 o'clock Central time. So um, stay tuned for that. Uh, as uh, we still want to uh, be live like we normally are. All right, last one here, Paul Mio uh, Moala, the linebacker. You guys may remember him from Notre Dame. Spent a few years there, then went to Idaho, uh, then played last year at Georgia Tech, and kind of put it all together. I mean, he was pretty damn productive, a little bit of everything a year ago. 65 tackles, 11 TFLs, four sacks, three forced fumbles, two pass breakups. Um, not the best athlete, but decent when you look. At the RAS here, a lot of yellow, which is kind of in that good, okay category. A little undersized, but I kind of get Jack Sanborn vibes here, where it's kind of just like, he's just kind of a good player when you watch him play. The measurables aren't great. He's not the fastest guy, but he's always around the ball. He gets hands on football, so uh, certainly a, a name to monitor. Kind of like corner, definitely a crowded position uh, right now is linebacker, so it's going to be tough to crack this team, but maybe he competes with a guy like Micah Baskerville and maybe sneaks onto the roster that way uh, if the Bears carry six linebackers. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. There you go, six Bears signings out of rookie minicamp. We already knew about Tommy Sweeney, Freddie Swain, John Jackson the third sign as well. Three defensive players, Leon Jones, Deshaun Mallory, and Paul Mwala. Uh, which player is most likely to make the 53-man roster? Out of these six guys, who do you think it is? I'll probably say Freddie Swain or Tommy Sweeney because A, both are veterans. B, those are positions where the depth of those positions have question marks, especially at tight end. Uh, so uh, I would say it's likely at one of those two. All right, before we get out of here, I did want to touch on the news that just came in. Uh, Lions, uh, Per Schefter, and others giving Jared Goff four years, $212 million bucks, $170 uh, million guaranteed. Um, largest contract in Lions history. And Look, it's been an interesting journey for Goff, and let me just get this out of the way. I actually like Goff more than most,
But if I'm a Bears fan, I'm not losing sleep over this. I just outplayed the Lions seven out of eight quarters before this extension. Jared Goff has not torched me like he has torched other teams. So I'm okay with this if I'm the Bears. Also, you always respect when a team goes all in. You can't really argue with it. But to me, I think this shortens their championship window a little bit. Now, obviously, as time goes on, the, it, the cap it will be smaller relative because the cap goes up. Other quarterbacks get paid higher. I get that. But he's the second highest paid quarterback right now. I kind of view this as like a two-year big window, and then that window shrinks like this year and next year. And then Aiden Hutchinson comes around, and um, you're going to have to look at other players on this team like um, – Laporta, you're going to have to decide on Jamison Williams. Like, decisions become tougher once you pay your quarterback top, top dollar. So, look, the Lions have drafted well. That helps. And, you know, you want to be paying your quarterback. But I would not put Jared Goff in the elite, elite tier. He's in the good tier. Like, he's anywhere between, I don't know, the 8th and 13th best quarterback in the NFL. Eh, I don't know. Like, if you're Detroit, you're a Detroit fan, you probably like it. But I don't dislike it as a Bears fan. Like, I'm not losing sleep over it. So, uh, listen, it's been an impressive turnaround for him after things ended ugly in Los Angeles. He's won a handful of playoff games. I'm by no means saying this sucks uh, or that he sucks. But, again, I'm kind of like, okay, if I'm a Bears fan, I, I, I'm cool with this. Like, this doesn't strike the fear of God into me if I am Chicago. All right, again, we'll be live tomorrow, 4 o'clock Central Time here on the channel. So, subscribe, set your – uh, alarms, whatever you need to do, we will be live then. My name is Harrison Graham. If you haven't already, subscribe. Let's take down the Cowboys report this month. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.